It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas, you rat bastard. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Here we are together again, you and me here on the radio. Been reading stories about the increase in panhandling. More and more people are panhandling. And police suspect that some of this activity is by people who recently had jobs and lost them and they have taken to panhandling. I've read other stories about prostitution. Prostitution, on the one hand, I read business is down. People can't afford prostitutes. So maybe prices will have to be cut. Deflation is coming to every part of society. By the same token, I've read speculation that people have begun prostituting themselves. And maybe the reason prices are down is because there's more competition. More people have decided to become prostitutes. There are people who have begun to uh, live in their cars. People who handed back the keys to their houses. There are people, uh, you read about the two people uh, who worked for Kaiser Permanente here in Southern California. They were fired from their jobs. And uh, these uh these uh, adults with their kids. Uh, Dad uh, said that uh, Mom and I uh, agreed that uh, murder-suicide was the best way to go for the whole family. So uh, it appears that Dad uh, went out and uh, massacred the entire family and then killed himself. And God only knows why somebody was driving, uh, driving westbound on the eastbound lanes of the Santa Monica Freeway at 5 o'clock in the morning, striking two different cars, God only knows if that was a drunk person or a desperate person. And if you box into this little package, the guy who showed up at uh, somebody's house dressed as uh, Santa Claus, it turns out that somebody was his ex-wife, who had taken him for all he had, as little as he had. And so he came with a makeshift flamethrower, uh, shot an eight-year-old girl in the face, proceeded to burn the house down, and... Then left and killed himself and found him dead at the home of his brother. You know, a lot of very tragic stories. And in one way or another, they're related to people losing their jobs, losing their money. People committing suicide who had invested money with Bernard Madoff, for example. We've had a couple of suicides connected to that, uh, with uh, fund managers killing themselves, uh, others. Tragic stories. But you obviously can't do a radio talk show talking to the uh, victims of suicide or homicide. They're not available for comment. But I am curious about the people who have gotten so desperate that they have taken to measures they never would have taken to before. I mean, I'm curious. You, I mean, I'm amazed you can still afford batteries for your radio, okay? But let's start with that. There you are. You had a job, you had a house, you had a wife, you had kids, you had a husband, whatever. And now you are out on the street. You're begging, you're panhandling, you're living out, um, you know, in a sleeping bag somewhere or in a doorway somewhere. You're living in your car. You've taken to going around the neighborhood, picking up odd jobs as a handyman with Maybe before you were a, you know, real estate salesman or a mortgage broker or something, and now you're down to that. I'm just curious. Seriously. I am wondering if you have gotten so desperate that you are now doing things you never could have envisioned before. Maybe you've applied for food stamps or welfare. Maybe you made your kids get a job or told them they can't go to college anymore. But I'm talking about the really desperate stuff. These are stories that need to be told because um, 
We only hear part of the story. We hear about the people who are complaining about what gas prices, when they go up, or people who complain that, uh, uh, you know, they, they have to tighten their belts. We, we hear all about that. But how about the people who have, have pretty much lost everything they had? Maybe a year ago or two years ago or three years ago, you had a home in the suburbs. You had a nice leased car, perhaps. You had a job you went to every day. You were making good money. I know somebody who's a mortgage broker used to brag to me the money was coming in hand over fist. They couldn't believe how much money they were making. And now their marriage is in jeopardy because the money isn't coming in anymore. The two of them just sit home fighting all day about what they're going to do next. Because uh, once that business goes down the drain, where do you go from there? You know, what do you, what do you transfer your talents to do? Uh, especially in a weak economy. And I'm willing to believe there's a lot of people out there who are panhandling, who used to be mortgage brokers. There are people engaging in prostitution. People selling drugs. People engaging in other illegal behavior. You know, maybe you're, uh, maybe you've become a coyote and you're bringing people in over the border. I don't know. But I'm curious, how desperate have you personally gotten? Are you now a beggar? Are you now a panhandler? Are you now a prostitute? I want to hear your story. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. How far have you fallen? That's what I want to know. Let's say hello here to Annie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going? I love you. Thank you. Doing great. Okay, so what I wanted to tell you about was uh, we stooped, well, not terribly low, but pretty low. Uh, my husband's a carpenter, and he's out of work. And uh, in the last couple of months, we had to walk away from our house. But we get in on the barter system. We found a house to rent, and it's owned by a little old lady whose her whole house is paid off and everything. But she offered us a house to live in exchange for my husband renovating the entire place. Really? Have oh, you ever done anything like that before? No, he hasn't. But what I mean is that, yeah, the economy sucks, but, you know, there's a silver lining if you can find it. Well, I understand that, and certainly you have to try to keep your chin up in a situation like this. There's no doubt about that. And uh, there are many people out there, I'm sure, who never thought they'd fall this far. Yeah, you know, try the barter system. If you can find a way to make it work, then try it. Of course, you have to have some talents that somebody else wants to barter. And many of the people out there don't have these kinds of skills. So, for example, I mentioned mortgage brokers earlier. Honestly, if you lost your job as a mortgage broker and you don't know how to use a screwdriver or a wrench, what what, what services are you going to barter? Prostitution. That's what no. I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you so much, Annie. Thank you. Appreciate the call. How far have you fallen? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Tony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? Not much, Tony. All right. So uh, my life story in ten seconds. Graduated college at twenty one. Two years later, got a really good job making six figures. Twenty six now. I got laid off. Uh, had a house in Calabasas. Sold it. Moved to Canoga Park. Uh, I had two cars. Sold both them. Um, went out and bought a little junky uh, car for eight grand. Uh, I now ride my bike to my bartending job seven days a week. Um, I have no problem swallowing my pride. You know, if I need to bartend to make ends meet, that's fine. But it's just a little weird going from my house, making six figures, bartending, riding your bike to your, from your apartment. Wow. Wow. How are you adjusting to that? Um, you know, I grew up as a really hard worker, so I just know, you know, you need to work for your money. But the lifestyle that I had for two years, it's really hard to cope with. I have to imagine you get used to things. Yeah, I get used to things. I mean, the way I set it up was in the morning I apply, you know, as many places as I can. And then once the afternoon hits, I just start working my ass off, you know, trying to bring myself back up. Thank you, Tony, for that story. Wow. Okay. I'm sure there's people like that. 
go from making six figures to uh, waiting tables. Fred on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Fred. How you doing? No, you're Fred. <laughs> yes, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I, I'm i still working, but my wife was, is disabled, and we, whatever I make, it's just bare minimum now. we barely making, making it. So I started sending a chronic. Uh, but you're selling and chronic, months. and where are you getting it from? I'm getting it from my friend here in the neighborhood. So he sells it to you in bulk? Yes. And then you, you sell it to others. How do you find customers? He gave me a few customers, and he's trying to help me out. Hopefully it's only temporary, but like I out of 400, I only take like 125. Really? Um, so, uh, we, I'm not getting rich by, by no means, but um, putting food on the table... Like I said, it's nothing that I'm proud of. Have you ever done it before? No, never. never not even never. In, not even when you were a kid or anything. Never, never. He just schooled me, gave me a a two hour crash lesson how to do it, how to sell it, and you got a wait, wait. You got a two hour crash lesson on how to sell chronic weed <laughs> from him. He told me how to bag it and uh, weigh it, and I was on my way. And then I started getting a customer base. So, I mean, I don't sell every day, only maybe the weekends. But it's, like I said, it's been some of my bills and, and the food on the table. I understand. And and what did you do again? I'm sorry? What did you do before? I'm a fiber terminator, like fiber optics. Well, what, what did that pay? About twenty twenty nine dollars an hour. So, well, I'm, like I said, I'm still doing it, but we're not we're not making it. My wife is disabled, like I said. Yeah. Wow. So now th these are your two jobs. You have your day job, and then you sell you sell weed by night. Yes. Yeah, so, and so, well, I mean, yeah, this is not like uh, this is not like. Um, sales GD where you get a list of leads and you go out there and you, you sell weed I mean what do you do get out of the local high school uh, where, where, how, do you, how do you sell it I quarter quarter ouncer quarter ouncer yeah for like a hundred bucks a quarter ounce four hundred for the whole ounce really yeah. No, but wait, like, like, do you do you sell it to your neighbors? Do you sell it to uh, elementary school students? Who are you selling to? Oh no, 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 we have to have some ethics. No, uh, just to uh, older people. Let me understand: that, is there uh, are there are ethics in the pot business that uh, someone introduces to someone else. Like I said, I don't, I don't have that many customers right now, but and I'm trying to. Uh, as soon as I get my a second job, I'm going to drop it. It's, I'm taking a big risk and. Like. Sounds like we're losing you there, Fred. Oh, my God. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Heather on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Hey, Heather. I am so excited to talk to you. I've called before, and I never get through. I listen to you every night when I drive home from work. Love it. Yes. Well, I actually am calling because I'm so glad you're talking about finances. I just turned the radio on. I just lost my job Friday. And, what, what did uh, what were you doing? I was working full time as a nanny, and I was making a pretty well good enough money for me. I was making a thousand a week take home. Thousand a week. And uh, it's that's good for me. That's good for me. I live very. Oh, no, that's I that's fifty two thousand take home. That that would put you in the bracket of maybe seventy five thousand a year before taxes. Uh, that's true. I was I, I drive a 2002 Honda Civic, and uh, I have a roommate. And I do live in West Hollywood, and I pay 13.5 for rent. But I really don't. I don't have a car payment. I don't spend that much money. I was doing pretty well. Wow. Yeah. So uh, so now I just want to know. I am actively looking for another job. I've applied to uh, UCLA to get into the master's program, but I want to know what I should do with the money that I have now. If I should do anything at all with it? No, no, don't be investing it. You you need money uh, to to pay your expenses in case of emergency, and this is an emergency. 
Yeah, I I uh, I do, but I don't have that much. I'm not. Can I can I tell you how much I have? Sure. I have uh, about fifteen thousand dollars in the bank in my checking account. Well, I would hold on to that for dear life. I know I am. Well, this is the thing, Tom. In June, when I was uh, when I was younger, my father was in a drunk driving accident. He was hit by a drunk driver and he was killed. So. There's money um, in, a, in an account for myself and my sister. So in June, I'm going to get $25,000 um, as, as a little payment. I get a little bump once a, once a month, and I'm going to get that $25,000 in June from the settlement. Now, what am I going to do with that? Well, uh, again, I would not be – you have no experience investing, I'm guessing. No, <laughs> not at all. Well, my recommendation to you is for now, just hold tight. Okay. Do not be uh, trying to find ways to invest this money. Do you have any debts? I do. I have oh. uh, about 8000 on a credit card. Uh, Why did you do that? Well, I actually got LASIK eye surgery, and that was a big chunk of it. And then I was just at the doctor recently, and that was another big chunk of it. So a little, a little here and there has been piling up. But I have that, and I have my undergrad student loans. Well, first thing you do is pay off that credit card debt, all of it. Okay. In fact, how much do you have, 15000 Yes. I'd pay it today. Well, the, how am I going to pay rent if I do that? You know, you still going to have seven thousand dollars left. Yeah, but I pay thirteen fifty a month. Right, but the point is, why pay interest on the money now? Uh, while you're waiting to run down to zero, I mean, why not pay it off today? And if you need money, if you if you if you get down close to zero, you can always take a cash advance on your credit card. Oh, I see. Right now, you're paying how much interest on that card? You know, I I don't know. I I'm thinking that it's under twenty percent. Twenty percent is a lot. Do you know, you know how much? Do you know how much your money is getting in the bank? No. Less no. than less than one percent. Yeah, I know it's really bad. So oh. you are paying nineteen percentage points, uh, just so you give yourself the illusion that you have money. Right. Okay. So I should pay the credit card completely. Okay. Later on, if you need more money and you can't uh, make it by working, then take out a cash advance. But you want to keep those uh, you want to keep those uh, uh, balances as low as you can. Okay. Do not be running up your credit cards. By the way, by the way, if you can't pay for it today, you can't afford it. I know, I know. See, I fell into I fell into that trap, but I like I said, I don't use it now. I'm good. I'm good with that. You That's need not, now to start huh? saving up for things you want. Okay. That's how your grandmother did it. Right. You wanted a washing machine. You didn't go take your credit card down to Sears. <laughs> you put money away, or you put things on layaway. That's <laughs> that's what you have to start doing. Right. Okay. Can I ask you one more question? Real quick. Now, say if I get into into grad school and I go through federal aid, am I, you know, how much do I take? Do I take a lot more than I need since I will not be working while I'm in school for two years? Federal aid? Uh, well, you know, whatever the FAFSA is, you know, student aid, whatever that now, is. Are you talking about, what, uh, subsidized loans or are you talking about cash that you get to keep? I think it would be under a subsidized loan. I guess I, you want me to look into that a little bit more. I'd have to look into that. Yeah, that's my point. You see, you don't even know what you're talking about. And right. You need to start getting a little more interested in this because, you know what? Ding, 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 ding. That's the fire alarm, okay? This is 911 talking to you now. Okay. You, know, you are not paying attention, and your house is going to burn down if you right. don't start paying attention. Right. So, well, everything was fine until about four days ago. No, but it so. didn't. It didn't, dear, because you were so close to the edge. You you just spent yourself right to the edge. I see. I see. You can't live like that. Okay. And this well, is why you can't live like that. I got it. I'll pay off my credit card, I, I think. And then cut it up. Or at and least then, put it away in a safe deposit box. Don't be using it until you need a cash advance because it's an emergency. Okay. If you, I can can't, do that. if you can't afford something, and by the way, I don't know if you go to Starbucks or what you waste money on, stop doing that. I, I don't. I told you I'm a good girl. Well, you I say, darling, you say card. that, but you know what? You didn't need laser eye surgery if you were this close to the edge. <laughs> you have a point, Tom. Know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. I'm so glad I got through. Literally, I've, call, I've had so many great stories to share with you. I've wanted to tell you. Comment on your other listeners. I'm so glad I got through today. It's amazing. Well, Heather, thank you for that. Tom Lightfoot.
Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likes Show. Show on 1 800 5800 Tom. How far have you fallen? Things are bad. I know they're bad. How far have you fallen? We read stories about uh, people who once had great jobs now uh, panhandling or engaging in prostitution. We heard from one guy who was selling pot to make ends meet. 41 year old man. He and his wife can't make ends meet, so he's selling chronic. How far have you fallen? You can tell us here. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Dean said he had a good price for that uh, weed, by the way. Did you hook some up for yourself there, Dean? Oh, he dropped off. That's right. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, wow, Holly on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Like your show. Thank you. <laughs> Um, well, I made a choice a, a few months ago when the gas prices started getting really crazy at four and a half bucks a gallon. I, I lived 14 miles from work, and now I only live a couple of miles. And I'm saving money on gas, and I'm saving money on rent because I moved in with an elderly friend of mine. And, uh, and in an exchange for doing some errands and little bit of caregiving i i get a break on the rent wow how much do you have to empty the bedpan how far does this go <laughs> well she's very capable she she can really take care of herself it's more to do with just going grocery shopping and and things like that it's it's not a big deal but um i i i'm I'm just jazzed. I can't imagine if I had to pay the full price of rent in these last few months. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, what do you normally do? Um, I have a, a little electronics business. And I'm here in San Luis Obispo. And, um, and business is good, but, you know, expenses are high. So... Um, you know, I just I just needed to make cutbacks. Uh, How is the business climate at San Luis Obispo? And for people who don't know San Luis Obispo, it's uh, almost 200 miles from Los Angeles. Well, there, there are there are some layoffs going around. Um, there's people who are calling my company to see if we have you know jobs available that didn't used to call. We didn't get so many calls, um, but uh, it, it's not so bad, you know. Um, our business sells globally, so you know when when there's drop offs in the American market, we could sell you know overseas, and that's okay and with the low dollar, it's actually compensating for it but um yeah, you know, and also I've made you know i i I'll never look at retail the same again i mean i I do my shopping at goodwill, I find great deals goodwill, there. yeah. Yeah, wow. but I buy new clothes at Goodwill. Great stuff, great condition, and and then I look at the prices at the retail store, and I say, "Wow, you know." You know, many women would never—at least they think they would never—quote unquote lower themselves to shop at Goodwill. Well, you know that. You know, I tell all my friends about it. I'm I'm not embarrassed. I you know I think for myself, and and I think uh, Americans, um, yeah, we're having hard times, but people just. They put too much importance on material stuff, and I'm not going to stress over it. I'm just going to stress over, you know, what I need, basically, and um, and I don't need a whole lot of stuff to be happy. So, um, you know, I tell all my friends about it. It, it doesn't embarrass me. <laughs> my sister rolls her eyes, but... <laughs> yeah, but that's true. <laughs> so you know why? I bet there's a lot of guys wishing they were married to somebody who would shop at Goodwill for a change. For God's sake. Thank you for the call. one eight hundred five eight hundred tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing, brother? Doing great, David. Great. Hey, um, 
You know, that young lady you were just speaking with, um, I totally agree with what you were talking about, uh, paying your balance off on that credit card, especially if you got the cash uh, in the bank. Yeah. It, me and my wife, we just did that, and I totally believe that, and, I, and I, 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 we do that. I just paid off American Express, our business account. Um, it had a 4000 balance. I just paid that off. Also, my Bank of America, which I have a $20,000 or twenty thousand dollar limit, it was uh, also another fourth grand. We had money in our bank. We said, let's pay this off. We don't know what's happening, but we got our credit cards. We can always use them as a little backup until we get it back on our feet. Guess what? I got a notice over the weekend. Bank of America set that $20,000 balance and reduced it to 500 stinking dollars. Wow. Do you have lousy credit? No, my credit score is 740. My wife is higher than me. She's 760. Well, maybe what you need to do is get a credit card with somebody else. Well, exactly. But I mean, they're doing it. Uh, American Express just did that off with a ten thousand dollar limit on our on our business check, our business account. They lowered it to two grand. They're taking it because people are living off their credit cards. They're afraid that people are going to file bankruptcy. So I wholeheartedly believe, yes, pay those balances off. But now I'm saying, hey, wait a minute, maybe we shouldn't do that. Well, I, I I still think that people ought to bite the bullet and uh, cut their debts. They really need to do it. Uh, this That's is the time. Exactly, and that's what we did. And we thought, hey, let's get these credit card bills down. Let's go ahead and and, and then you know we can use those as later on if something happens. You know, luckily my job is safe. I'm okay for right now, and so is my wife. But dang, man, it's hard. You know, if you lose those credit cards and your cash is gone, that sucks, brother. Thank you, David, for the call. I appreciate it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. How far have you fallen, Joseph, on the Tom Likas show? Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Well, uh, my, you know, real quick, my story is a little bit different. It's not really uh, how far I've fallen, but um, I've basically been in the pest uh, uh, control field for about seven years uh, after I got out of the military. And obviously with the economy slowing down, uh, it basically work is slowed down. You know, you're working less. Um, so I had come in contact with an old friend of mine who uh, actually went to work overseas uh, doing contractor work and uh, he put, basically put me in touch with a company, uh, or I should say a corporation, which basically has um, uh, three programs basically in California, uh, Texas, and Florida. And what they basically do is uh, you go through an eight-week course, and uh, you're basically set up to go out and protect dignitaries in uh, what's called non-combat zones, which are obviously like Iraq, Afghanistan. So um, it's pretty much counterterrorism work. Um, and, you know, they don't really just take anybody. You can have specific requirements that you got to meet. You know, you go through credit checks, uh, FBI fingerprinting. Uh, so it's going to be about an eight, eight-week program that I leave to in about a, a couple of weeks, I think. I'm not sure what the date was. And, uh, you know, you basically sit down and you write down contracts, and they agree to a certain amount of money, a uh, certain amount of bonuses. Um, and it's basically a 90-day rotation. And you come back for 30 days and then another 90-day rotation with uh, – basically a two-year uh, commitment and you know all weapons are provided all body armor um you know and that's basically it so i'm going to be probably in saudi arabia unbelievable did you ever think you'd be doing something like that well you know tom when, when i was uh, in the military of the combat engineer uh, and a lot of the aspects of the things i did there involved uh, uh you know we were starting to get into counter to counterterrorism training yeah At the end when i got out um and, and that, that was one of the things that basically helped me because, uh, you know, nowadays, and, you know, this company that I'm going to work for, it's not one of these big ones like Halliburton or Blackwater. Um, it's, it's definitely a smaller one, but, uh, you know, for these private military companies nowadays, um, even the smaller ones are, are generating, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So they're, they're definitely looking to put out the money for, for young people that are qualified to, you know, it is risky, but, you know, they basically do tell you, they let you know, you know, how many times they've gotten into, uh, you know, armed engagements and if anyone's ever been killed in the line of duty. This company usually has a really good track record. Not not as many people get killed at this company as other companies. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd be sleeping at night. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's not something that I, you know, I just wanted to go off and do, but I really thought about it. But, you know, being that it's a two-year commitment, I'm going to basically take those two years make a two-year plan and you know i'm just hoping to pay off my uh my home uh which i can within those two years um you know and and and, and the uh, cash wise i mean you know you're basically going at two hundred thousand a year 25 bonus after the completion of that first year and then you know year two you go up to 250 
So, and all that stuff is, you know, it's all given to you in contract. So, it's not things they just tell you in the year and say, hey, you might make this, you might make that. Cause, you know, they're, you're they're looking, guaranteed to get it as long as you don't get killed. I think that's fantastic. Well, yeah. Well, as long as you're not dead, you'll be getting a, you'll a fixed amount. Definitely. But um, why don't you go ahead and blow me up, Tom? Okay, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Tony on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. How you doing, baby? How you doing, Tony? Times are bad, Tom. How Times are how bad. far have you fallen, Tony? I just placed an ad to sell my car. What car? Nineteen sixty six Chevy Malibu. Oh my God! Just cut the heart out of you, for God's sake. Yeah, that's my dream car, dude. With my heart, just just you know, just cut me in half right now man i just but you know what i gotta do what i gotta do dude how long you know? have you owned that car about eight years already and how 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 many years did you dream of getting it since i used to wash my uncle's car when i was like eight years old he used to bring his 66 every weekend and i used to wash that baby and i used to love the smell the interior the look of it man i said i want a car like this as soon as i get old so that was, what, eight years old when I was dreaming about it. So it's been a long time, dude. How much did you pay for that car? About ten grand. How much can you get for it? I just put it down for about 20 Wow. And you're hoping the phone doesn't ring, I imagine. I'm hoping something will come out where I can cancel that ad, man, or tell the people, you know, hey, it's already been sold. Ouch. Ouch. So... Hey Tom, take me out with old style, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. I gotta go. I understand. <laughs> Tom, like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood, California. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. How far have you fallen? We know the economy's bad, but what have you been reduced to? Dealing drugs? You went from an executive position to being a security guard? Maybe you're a prostitute, maybe you're a pimp, maybe uh, you've been reduced to, I don't know, panhandling, living in your car. I want to know. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Son, how are you? You're going to be ashamed of me when I tell you what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I came out of the real estate world, made a lot of money. I spent like a drunken sailor. We won't go into that. Uh, But about a month and a half ago, uh, I was desperate so i resorted to scamming uh what i do is i place ads in the los angeles area in orange county craigslist uh men seeking men the ad will read something along the lines of uh surfer d- stud seeks generous daddy type uh so uh these guys that contact me now, let me ask you a question older, are, are you gay no, I'm 100% straight, and I don't use my real picture. I use a picture that looks similar to mine. These are, like, copy and paste pictures I use. I mean, the guys, look they resemble me, but they're not me. I'm 30. I advertise it's 23. I do look good for my age. I am in good shape. All right, so you, you say you're looking for, like, a sugar daddy type, and then uh, what happens? You meet these guys where? Uh, I have. I mean, always meet them at a park. There's two parks I use in Long Beach. There's one in Cerritos, and there's one up in San Pedro. And we make arrangements for like a car type date. And it's always between two and three hundred dollars. Uh, I ask them to see the money. I then see the money. They show it to me. I snatch it out of their hands. I drive away. Done deal. I don't threaten them. I don't carry a firearm or any type of weapons. I snatch the money and run. In the last month and a half, I've made $3,800 doing this. Wow. And uh, you've never worried about being caught? 
Well, what I do for co- for phone contact is I, I bought like a, a throwaway type uh, cell phone, the kind where you have to like get a card to reload the minutes. Right. And I mean, they could track my email address. I mean, if they really wanted to, I guess they could probably track my IP address if they really wanted to. But like I said, Tom, most of these guys are married or old creepy perv types, and. I mean, what uh, what are they going to do? Call the police and say that they met some guy online that they're trying to, the young guy that they're trying to pay for sex and they're married. I mean, I pop them for two or three hundred bucks and they they get ripped off. And I mean, that's not the type of crime you want to report. Have any of them tried to lunge at you or uh, uh, attack you? Uh, no, uh, basically, I, I I keep the I, I roll up in my SUV. It's a Tahoe. All the doors are locked. I roll the passenger side window down. I have my motion them over usually. I tell them what type of vehicle I'm going to be driving. Uh, you know, and we have a brief dialogue. I ask to see the money. I grab it and I drive off that quick. I keep the motor running. I don't get out of the vehicle. I don't, I mean, it's quick. I'm amazed. Yeah, but I, I, I'm a straight male, and I thought of that on a whim. I posted the ad. I didn't know what type of response I would get, but I had a lot of guys write me back. You know, uh, Do no, any of them write to you after through. you've ripped them off? Do they ever write to you and say, I'm, I'm coming to get you, or I, I know who you are, or any, nothing? Uh, a couple of them have written me nasty emails, but like I said, most of them admit they are married or they're creepy perv types, and... Uh, I mean, what are they going to do? Are they, are they going to go to the police and, and, and tell them something? Their wife is going to find out. They're going to make a police report. The You know, the police might be phoning their house, calling them at work. Or I mean. And what were they doing with uh, money, handing money to you? Sounds like they were engaging in prostitution. Now, now you've never been worried that somebody would pick out, uh, you know, pull out a pistol or a shotgun or something? No, I don't. I'm, in in my opinion, I could be wrong, but I don't think. I mean, it could be just the opposite. I mean, I could run across a guy that's trying to rip me off, but so far it hasn't happened. I mean, they send me pictures. I, I advertise, on, you know, basically I'm looking for married guys, you know, a sugar daddy type of guy. And, and generally they, they have very nice cars. They're well-dressed. They look straight. And, and uh you know, they're they're basically normal guys looking for a little kink, and they think they're going to get a little kink, but what they're going to do is get their two or $300 taken. Now, do you have a college degree? Yes, I do. In what? IT. Uh, I graduated with a degree in computer science. Did, and you, did you ever think when you studied for your college degree, and you got it, that you would end up falling this far? No, what happened, Tom, is, is I got my degree, I advanced well, I, I mean, right out of college I was making pretty, I went from making like 12 bucks an hour starting to over 70, I jumped from $12 an hour to 70 grand in my first year out of school, I, I, I did that, that type of leap, and then, uh, the job started to get outsourced. My brother, older brother was a real estate agent. Uh, he brought me into that. Of course, everybody was making money hand over fist on that. Uh, that went in the tank. Um, I, I was a flipper. I tried to flip some properties and, uh, I was making, I, I made good money. I spent like a drunken sailor, Tom. I'm a big time gambler. I was in Vegas regularly, uh, semi well, uh, status, um, and, I was, I'm, 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 it was basically reduced to nothing right now. You can't do this forever. What are you going to do? I, Tom, I don't know at this point. Um, it, it, it's scary. And, uh, I mean, my IT degree is pretty much worthless with all this outsourcing and all the younger people willing to do the job for way more. Um, way less. Yes. Or way less. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, but, yeah, Tom, um, that, that's, that's, I don't know what I'm going to do. Hang on a second here, Mark. Steven, what did you want to say to Mark? Hey, guys, this is Steven. Uh, you know, this guy is a total moron because he just blew his cover. And I don't think he can do it again without getting his uh, behind kicked in pretty hard because somebody's going to set him up now that they know what car he drives what scam he pulls, I think he's a lunatic for going on the air and blowing his deal. Well, I, I, I don't think the demographic that I'm hitting is necessarily the Tom Lycus demographic anyway. You know what? It just takes one guy to mess you up. Just take I mean, one. You got away with it for a while, but I'll tell you one thing. You're going to mess with the wrong guy, 
and you're going to be sorry you ever did it. I guarantee I agree. it's it inevitable. I agree with you 100, percent but I don't think that the the person the person the people that I'm tar- targeting are necessarily Tom Likas uh, type listeners, and uh, and and it's very possible that I could run into some trouble. I agree with you. You will run into trouble. It's inevitable. It's just you're lucky that it hasn't happened yet. I mean, I don't want to do it forever, but, I mean, this is like quick, easy money. I don't have to do anything. Well, let me ask you a question. Why would you even say the kind of car you drive on the air and reveal your whole scam with all the details? Well, Tom wanted the details. I said it's an SUV. I didn't say what type or what make. Yeah, you did. You said it's the Tahoe. Okay, I messed up. Yeah, I did. You, you, you know what? I think you're an idiot. I think, you know, you've been lucky and the odds will catch up to you if you keep doing what you're doing. There's no question about it. Hey, Tom, I can't deal with this fool. Blow me up, please. All right, here you go. Wow. What a story. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Kara on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Daddy. Hi, dear. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you. I love you so much. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I was calling to tell about what I'm having to do for extra money now. Since the business I'm in um, is having some hard times, um, at night I'm a phone sex operator. Yeah, now, what were you doing for a living? Um, I work with autistic children. I'm a behaviorist. And with the budget cuts in the school district, um, a lot of our hours have been cut lately. So you've gone from working with autistic children <laughs> to, 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 to doing phone sex? Um, yeah, at night. Wow. So. And uh, where do you do it? From home? Yeah, from home. And did you, did you, how many guys do you talk to in a night? Um, anywhere from like 10 to sometimes maybe 20 or 30. How much do you make? Um, I make about $400 extra a week. Wow. Yeah, it's been a nice little chunk of change. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, so it's been nice. I still work during the day, but the hours have been cut so bad because the school district's budget is horrible. So I had to find something to do to keep myself in college. I understand. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.